Yo, 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 what is good, YouTube? It is your boy, Make America Lit, back with another NBA 2K22 video. And in today's videos, I'm going to be ranking all of these shooting badges in NBA 2K22 current gen. Okay, so this is the next gen, this is current gen. Um, yeah, let's just jump right into it. Um, I have five tier lists I have D tier, C tier, B tier. A tier and then S tier. S tier just being like must have badges you have to have. And then obviously D tier being badges that you know um you could go out, go go without or badges that I would never put on. So um starting off, now this is just my opinion. These are the D tier badges. Now these three badges are the badges that I would never put on under any circumstances. I mean <clears throat> I'll break down the reason why um circus threes I don't I don't think like alright so this badge isn't bad you know a lot of people run circus threes and it, it is a good badge but this isn't like really my play style I'm shooting you know catch and shoot threes or like you know a uh, stop and pop type of three I'm not really shooting moving threes and stuff like that and occasionally you know I mean you could probably put this on like silver or bronze because there are times where I catch a pass and it gives me a moving three shot and like a lot of times i'm not ready for it and i think if i had this badge on it would certainly help with knocking those shots down but i don't take these shots often enough to require me to just throw this on hall of fame or gold or anything like that so that's the real reason why i don't really you know use this badge or whatever uh this is more like tailored to a certain play style if that's your play style you know like a luca Donchick type of you know faded moving threes or whatever like that then yeah for sure I could see this being really good if you could if you pair it with like um like a corner specialist or something like that like you shooting like moving you know corner threes or whatever like that I could see that being really good or whatever like that but me personally just not my cup of tea man just not my cup of tea chef they did a test on the chef badge and you have to like they, like there's just mad shit involved with the activating the chef badge of like you have to stop and then hold the ball or reset the timer and then you gotta move it then you gotta shoot it in 0.5 seconds or it doesn't activate it's just a lot of bullshit and then on top of that you have to be really deep in order to shoot this you know uh to get the badge to activate so that's why i really don't like the chef badge and i'm not really planning on using the chef badge uh same thing with limitless spot up um, you have to be so deep. I mean, they are talking about putting out a patch. I know Mike Wing said that they were going to put out a patch for Chef and Limitless so that they always activate. I'm not sure if they put that patch out yet or if they're going to do like an actual update or if it'll just be like, you know, one of those quiet in the background patch updates like they did for Unpluckable. But all I know is as it stands right now, to my knowledge, yo, these two badges are worthless. Circus 3s. It's worthless to my play style, but it is a good badge, I guess, you know, if that's your thing. But my opinion, you know, my video, I'm not running Circus 3s, you know what I'm saying? Um, so those those would be the three badges. Um, C tier list, this, this is the, 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 the list of badges that, like, if you have 25 plus, I would run some of these badges. But if I don't, like, you're, you're not going to die if you don't run these badges, you know what I'm saying? So... Um, C tier list I have slippery all ball which is really good for like slashing builds and stuff like that but if you have an extra badge or two that you're not using this is actually really good for getting open too like I mean it's easy to get open this year but um yeah I, I would I would also throw that on as well um corner specialist I have in um C tier as well this is these badges are really for a certain play style you know um if, if you're a lock or you just sit corner or whatever like that while your guy isos or whatever you know you're playing off ball then badges the badge like this is good but if you're not or if you're not just sitting corner or you're not a big man or a lockdown that's going to play the corner every time there's really no point in wasting this this badge point to to put hall of fame or gold or anything really even bronze you know um unless that's your play style again the the c tier list badges are really like situational badges you know or tailored to a specific play style um and the corner shot the corner three is like the easiest shot to hit in the game so it's like do you even really need corner especially if you have like a 80 80 to 75 three or better if you have a 75 three or better you really don't even need corner specials my opinion 
because you're getting a boost for like hot zone hunter and catch and shoot and all these other badges and if somebody has dimer and stuff like that floor general you really don't need this badge on so that's why i have corner specialist in the c tier list as well same thing with lucky number seven this is like really a badge i, I rock this badge on bronze actually but uh this this is very situational it's like when you're taking a quick shot yeah or somebody you know somebody scores in wreck and then you get back down the court and you're able to throw up a quick three, like this badge is going to pop. But how often does that happen in a game of, you know, a uh, wreck? And I primarily play wreck. Playing park, I can see this badge being a lot more important, especially like a twos. In the twos, yeah, I probably would throw this on Hall of Fame for sure. But, you know, being out primarily play wreck and then occasionally threes or whatever, I wouldn't put this badge any higher than bronze for me. Unless they buff it or something like that, I just feel like it's way too situational for this badge to matter same thing with like a badge like clutch shooter i feel like this badge is so situational if you read the description you know shot attempts that occur during the final moments of the fourth quarter or any overtime period so like if you go to an overtime then this badge is hella 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 good but and it's funny enough i just played the double overtime game in rank like the other day so clutch shooter probably would have did me really well but Alas, I'm not running it. I'm running a lot of bronze badges, but Clutch Shooter is not one of those badges. But I would throw Clutch Shooter in either C or B tier. It could be B tier. Especially if you're playing like Pro-Am and stuff like that. Playing stage, I can see Clutch Shooter being a lot more valuable. Uh, but for right now, I have it in the... Um, in between of B and C tier. I have it in B tier, but we could just throw it in C tier as well. Set Shooter, I thought the name of the badge... And even the description of the badge to be really good. And I was running this while I was grinding my badges. Because I'm like, damn, set shooter gives a shot boost after standing still before taking a jump shot. But now I found out that the badge test that you have to hold the ball for like two, three seconds or something like that. So it's just like, yo, the time that it's going to take. If they, if they buff this and reduce the time to like maybe one second that you have to hold it, catch one Mississippi and then pull. I could see this badge being really good on like a uh, gold or a hall of fame. But as it stands now, the time that it takes for you to catch it and then shoot it, this badge is dog shit in my opinion. Don't run this badge ever. Unless you're grinding badges in career. Now, if you're grinding badges in career, this, this badge is amazing because you're just going to catch the ball, hold it, jab, step, and then pull. This badge is going to pop every time. And that's the reason why I thought it was a really good badge because this badge will pop every single time while i was grinding badges and i had it on bronze then i realized you know after they did the test that you have to hold it for like two three seconds so it's just in a game where like you're trying to get your shot off as fast as possible this badge just isn't that good at all you know um even for a certain play style i could see this badge i thought that this badge would be really well if you paired set shooter with limitless spider because most people aren't going to come all the way out to limitless and guard you you know what i'm saying so if you hold, you catch it and hold that shit for two, three seconds and then pull with limitless spot up, I can see that shot going in a lot more times than anything else. But also, again, you have to hold it for like two, three seconds. So some people might come out and t contest you. They're like, oh, he's a play shot. Oh, he's a stretch. Yeah, you let me get out there. You know what I'm saying? So it, it really depends, man. It really depends. But to my knowledge, unless they buff it and lower the time needed to, to hold the ball, yeah, this this ain't it. You know what I'm saying? This definitely isn't it. And then the final badge I have in C tier is Fade Ace. And again, this is this falls under the pretense of like lucky number seven in the sense that it's not a bad badge. It's just very specific to a playstyle. So, you know, if you're a post scorer or you have like a a Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant esque build where you're gonna be doing a lot of um high post and shooting out of the post in the mid range and stuff like that. Or if you're a post scoring big and you're gonna get busy on a block and stuff like that to the midi, then yeah, this badge is good. But it's like I have a high post fade. I have like a eighty something post fade or whatever, eighty six or eighty seven, whatever play shots get. Cause I do have max badges. I did lower it down some, but um yeah like this is very situational and i don't think it would be really necessary um for most play styles you know what i'm saying um with that being said we'll get in straight into the um b tier badges that i have and i have um difficult shots um rhythm shooter and of course like i talked about earlier clutch shooter i won't even get into clutch shooter but Rhythm Shooter, it's, it's, it's an okay badge. You know, it pops after breaking down your defender. Personally, 
Um, I run it on bronze right now, but there really isn't any tests right now, any test results to my knowledge. You know, as far as the guys who really be testing these badges and stuff like that. If you if you're asking me for the eye test, I run it on bronze because I feel like it, it's decent. You know what I'm saying? It's going to pop. Anytime you get, like, an ankle breaker or if you shoot off of, like, a crossover, step back type dribble move or whatever, or breaking your defender down, this badge is going to pop. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I, 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 would, I would personally run it on bronze, and I haven't put it any higher until I get, like, some actual test results telling me that this badge is better than just rocking it on bronze. You know, until then, it's staying on bronze, you know. Otherwise, you know, uh, do do as you will, you know, test it, you know, throw it on silver, gold, Hall of Fame, whatever you want to run it on. But personally, I just run it on bronze, but I would consider it a B tier badge just based off the description and off the eye test of me running it or whatever like that. And then difficult shots, I have in B tier as well. Difficult shots has always been like a iffy badge in 2K. You know, back then, you know, when the badge first really got introduced, it was straight up a plus four to your moving shot which was tremendous if you had like an 86 or a 90 or something mid-range shot put in plus four to that giving you a 94 or a 90 or something like that or 85 it's, it's a it's a mild of difference from 80 to 84 mid or 85 to 89 86 to 90 90 to 94 there's a big difference with that and then when you add in other badges like hot zone and dead eye and stuff like that it's a it's a very big difference you know what i'm saying so um did the reason why I have this in B tier is because I I really noticed that I have a ninety something mid range already. I have like a ninety two mid range. I really don't need this badge. I green my midi shots, moving shots at that. I green them at a high rate. I'm shooting over seventy percent from the field. I don't personally feel like I need difficult shots, but I would say this badge probably ain't that bad to throw on like a bronze or a silver or something like that. But you know, if you have the badge points, I would say it's a decent badge. If you have, like, 20-plus badge points, I'm not mad at somebody throwing this on a bronze or a silver just to get that extra oomph. You know what I'm saying? When you coming out of ice win and you pull up for a midi or something like that. Especially when you think you stop and, and then you keep moving and they give you a moving shot. That's going to save you, a, a, you know, sometimes when you have that poor release or whatever. But personally... Personally, I, I I wouldn't run this higher than bronze. That's just me. You know what I'm saying? And that 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 right there is the um B tier list. Now the A tier list are badges that you don't need them to be a good shooter, in my opinion. But if you have these badges on, these badges are going to help you tremendously. And that is Green Machine, Catch and Shoot. Oh, excuse me. Uh, my allergies are going crazy right now, by the way. Uh, mismatch Expert and Volume Shooter. These badges right here now, with the exception of Mismatch Expert, because they did just nerf this badge. This badge was really good before, but it wasn't really necessary to be a great shooter, in my opinion. Um, volume Shooter is really underrated. I think this year, Volume Shooter is going to be... Vet like, everybody's going to be running Volume Shooter because of how easy it is to shoot already in this game. You're going to be greening. Same thing with Green Machine. I don't see a lot of people running this badge as high as they used to. Personally, I only run Green Machine on Bronze because it's just so easy to green this year. You do not need that boost. You can put... Here's the thing. You can put Hall of Fame, Green Machine, and Volume Shooting, Catch and Shoot, and stuff like that on... And obviously, it's going to give you more of a boost. It's going to be better. But it's like, that boost is so minuscule, in my opinion, that, like, you're still going to be shooting whether you have this on gold or bronze. Like, you're not, it's not going to matter. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would rather you take those two points off of that and take the, the three points off of catch and shoot. You now have, what, five points now that you can put anywhere else now if you have all of the stuff that you need already then i'm not mad at you putting these badges on but i think there's other badges that you could you know go with um the only one that i would really put on uh, uh, higher or at this level is volume shooter the rest of these badges i'm not really running i don't run mismatch expert because i'm six four and nine times out of ten, I'm not going to really be getting guarded by somebody that's six eight. So this mismatch expert badge isn't really going to help me at all. If it was just players that were taller than you, then yes. But it's not, you know, because I do get guarded by six five and six six lockdowns and stuff like that. 
if that was the case, then yeah, I would say it's worth it. But because you have to, they have to be four inches or taller. Nine times out of ten, bigs aren't switching on to me because I'm a play shot. I'm too fast. I can dribble and stuff like that. They're not gonna want to guard you or whatever. I can I can see you throwing this on a bronze or silver, you know. But I personally wouldn't run it. If you have a short build, if you made a six-two play shot, then yes, this is the badge for you, hundred percent. But me being six four, I, I want to be able to defend a little better. I didn't go six two. Um, this badge ain't gonna really help me. Not 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 to the point of putting it on gold or Hall of Fame, in my opinion. You know, if you want to run it on bronze or silver, be my guest. But I just wouldn't uh do that. You know, and for the S tier badges, and these are the badges that you must have if you want to be a great shooter. I have, uh, of course, Stop and Pop Hall of Fame. Blinders Hall of Fame, Dead Eye Hall of Fame, Hot Zone Hunter Hall of Fame, and finally Sniper Hall of Fame. Now these badges, you want to max these badges out. Whatever you can get it maxed on, you you should max them out. And if you can't max them out, you should try to grab all of these badges. Um, if you can't get Stop and Pop, you can live without Stop and Pop. I've seen people play without Dead Eye, but me personally, I feel like shooting is so easy in this game. I don't need boost that's going to help me shoot more or or shoot better. You know, I can go without green machine. I can go without volume shooter and catch and shoot. But the best thing that you can have in this, in 2K22, you know, is badges that are going to nerf your contest because you're already going to be a great shooter. You're already going to have the great attributes of like an 80 plus three to shoot. You're already going to have, you know, I guess your hot zones and stuff like that. If you're doing what you're supposed to do. But what, one thing that you can't do is magically make them contest you less. Unless you have blinders and dead eyes. So that's the reason why I always have these badges Hall of Fame. You're never going to not see these badges Hall of Fame on my build. The only badge you might not see Hall of Fame is stop and pop. I might throw that on gold and move stuff around or whatever like that. But these badges will always be Hall of Fame. And these badges will always in my opinion, even with the nerf to blinders, maybe you want to go down to gold. But personally, I, I want to be contested at least as possible. So these are the badges that I'm running on my build, um, on my 6'4 play shot. Uh, as for the badge setup, um, I think, I th I believe these are, this is the badges. These are the badges that I'm running, but I only have 25 badges. So let me see, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. So I have five more. I think I have on bronze green machine, gold volume shooter, and I think I have bronze catch and shoot. So I think this is my setup for my play shot right now for my 25 badges. Hall of Fame blinders, dead eye, hot zone hunter, sniper, stop and pop. And then I have volume shooter, green machine, and catch and shoot. Um, if I was to switch this around, I might go bronze volume shooter and then throw on like maybe a bronze difficult shot and a bronze clutch shooter like that, something like that. If you if you don't want to rock gold volume shooter, but because I'm primarily taking a lot of shots a game, I'm averaging probably like around 12 to 13 shots, give or take, in rec, you know what I'm saying, in pro-am. You're gonna want you're gonna want some type of volume shooter at least for me anyway. So you know, um, yeah, man. Those those are you know the, my rankings for the shooting badges in NBA 2K22. Man, these are the badges that I think that you know are the top tier as far as like you know if you want to be a great shooter in this game, man. Uh, you know if this video helped you in selecting your badges or changing your badge layout, man. Be sure to drop a like, comment. And subscribe for more NBA 2K22 content. Peace.